Good evening, everybody. I know we were, uh, we showed that we were canceling tonight, but they finally let me out of the hospital. I was there because of, uh, I was, RT, it was me that was the family emergency. I've got cellulitis, which is where your, makes your skin turn red. And blotchy. If you don't take care of it, it can be deadly. So Saturday morning, I woke up and my left leg was bright red and swollen. So of course, the nurse cracked it upstairs. I need to go over to the emergency room, and then they directed me to the hospital. But what really bugged me was they gave me a this big drip bag. He said, oh, you need to get over to the hospital so they can continue this. Got over there, settled in. Nobody seemed to be in any hurry to give me another drip bag. Well, I finally said we came over because of another drip bag. He said, oh, no, the one you got, you don't have another one for 24 hours. Like, and what the heck do you got me rushing over here for? I could have come over tomorrow. Anyway, obviously I was talking with the staff and not the doctors, and they didn't have any. Oh, uh, cellulitis is one of those things where when you get it, once you get it the first time, it keeps coming back. So I've had it in the past, mostly up in my chest area and around my shoulder. So we have to go over and get antibiotics. So that's about all I know about it. All I know, though, is everybody runs around and says, oh, if you don't take care of this, it could kill you. What kills me is sitting in the hospital for three days doing nothing. Anyways, let's take a look at the Dow here. All right, as we can see, the 200-day moving average is not going to be a resistance level. As a matter of fact, in today's trading, it's showing that it's a uh, support level. So we've got, un not unfortunately, but fortunately, a lot of good charts to look at. So this uh, this may take a while tonight, but I'm not in any hurry because I think they're watching a chick flick upstairs again, so I'm not going to rush upstairs. Anyway, so the, the uh, investor sentiment obviously is still in a positive direction, kind of being confirmed by the NASDAQ. Notice how we had a kicker-type signal right here off the uh, the T-line, followed by a doji sandwich. Looks like a J-hook pattern. Still makes heading for the 200-day move in a very obvious target. Not an obvious target, but a light, light, likely target. So with that type of market condition, it puts us in situations where we can recognize the patterns setting up. So I think, no, oh, Peshaw. We recommended IOVA on Friday. And had I been here during the weekend, I would have uh, recommended if it opened positive, what would be happening? You'd have a doji sandwich. And what was our overall pattern? So kind of your morning star followed by a doji sandwich. This just puts you in a situation where the probabilities were pretty strong you were going to be in an uptrend and a continued uptrend. Uh, not necessarily a trend kicker in this case. Uh, no volume. All right. A uh, Bob, a trend kicker is usually something where the trend is in progress. This was just kind of consolidation and then started back up by the kind of a kicker signal. So the difference between a trend kicker is you know, I'll try to find one, but 
this would have been more considered a kicker signal because you were in a downward direction heading up, whereas a trend kicker, usually you're in an uptrend with a down day, and then they kick it back up again. And I'll, I'll point one out if I come across one. All right, so when you have a good trade, you can see what was happening on QTT. Nice fry pan bottom. I need to make these smaller. Diana, yes, there was just kind of a cellulitis that doesn't cause any problems other than if you don't take care of it, it can turn into something serious. So, again, because I've got Nurse Cratchit here, anytime it shows up, we're off. The... Fortunately, I've got uh, UPMC here in Pittsburgh, which is, from my understanding, one of the best hospital systems in the nation. And everybody's friendly. It's uh, So, unfortunately, it's getting to the point where they all know me when I walk in. That's just not good. So you got kind of a dark cloud here in QTT after your fry pan bottom. Um, so the next thing you need to see is if they open it lower, you're taking profits because they're probably coming back to test the T-line. To stay long, you need to see it open positive and trade positive, which after hours, it looked like they were still trading it up a little bit. So we're, let's go through more of the ones that we're in right now. Blue looks like it's in a classic fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern, still making the 200-day moving average the likely target. The uh, lead stocks are still acting well. Crone, notice how you're starting to move a good distance away from the T-line. Did they ask you? No, I think I've been so much over at Passive Ant Hospital that they all know me because Andy usually brings in the Who is Santa book and they, all the nurses that I don't see very often during the day all kind of rush in and they're there so they get booked. But here's a case where with this moving as much as it has, that's when I flip to the 10 minute chart and when the 10 minute chart starts doing this, and start taking profits. Uh, why is that? Because of the first clue on their daily chart that we've moved that far away from the T-line. ACB broke out nicely today. Nice J-hook pattern breakout. What was the other one? Oh, NB TV. Still in a slow uptrend. This one has to open positive tomorrow because if you're not quite in the over, you're not near the overbought area, but you definitely need to see this open positive. If they open lower, that's kind of telling you you're having a hard time getting through this level. BGC, kind of the same scenario, and I haven't really even looked at TLRY. That one doesn't have the best of the charts. Again, Crone of obviously has been a nice uh, nice mover. I do CDD. CDD, you get ready to buy this one. Uh, it starts trading positive. Aqua. This is a nice fry pan bottom. You want to stay long on this one, especially after, look at your little wedge. Well, what happened to my friend here? You kind of see that wedge, and then they broke out to the upside. Okay, what else we got? We uh, recommended MRTX a few days ago off the Morningstar Signal scoop type pattern. It was having a little bit of trouble, trouble breaking out, but it looks like today they uh, moved it up nicely. 
IQ, to stay long. Kiva, you stay long. Now, this would have been a little bit uh, indicative that there might be some profit taking had they closed it below the T-line. But as you can see in today's trading, they still didn't take it below the T-line. However, it may still be a good, strong move if it opens positive and starts trading positive. Gabriel, hold on to your uh, individual uh, requests. More than likely, I will have them on the uh, uh, on tonight. So we got a ton of stocks to go through because there's still a lot of good-looking stocks. P R T A C K. You stay long, or you can even be a buyer. Comes breaks out through this level. E B I E B I X. Just been a good steady eddy. see the fry pan bottom you can see where it broke out so what's our simple rule of a fry pan bottom you just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the t-line tph this is your left right combo breakout obvious target is probably up here at the 200 day moving average. Where would I set my stop? Below today's low, because this should be moving in this direction versus pulling back in this direction. That's kind of the same scenario on ALGN, after the left-right combo, big move. Remember, this is something to visually recognize as what we call a double doji setup. When they pull back indecisively, pull back indecisively, if they open positive the next day, you want to be buying aggressively. That indecisive pullback is uh, uh, telling you the profit taking that's going on is profit taking, not selling. Inverted hammer on CSTM, low curve. I would suspect you're heading for the 200-day uh, moving average. Some of these, even though they're not moving with great resiliency, they're heading in the right direction. Kind of a J-hook pattern on he's. You just stay long. Delphi. You can see kind of the fry pan bottom, up and handle, J-hook. Those your doji gap up, steady eddy. You just stay with this one. Uh, VIPS, VIPS is slowing down, but it hasn't done anything yet. You might almost have a triple double doji set up. They open this positive. Still great prospects. They could be taking this up to the 200-day moving average. Wheaton, just stay long. Oh, boy. You got this one. This is what I was. So notice how you had your little doji or uh, sweet little bullish, but the gap up. I told you they were breaking through uh, this downtrending channel. This is always a, when you see that big consolidation, and then you gap up through, that's telling you it's time to be buying. This one is probably going to be recommended tomorrow. CVIA, same scenario. And they're breaking through this downtrending channel. Notice you're bullish and golfing. The Catholic's coming up. What do you think your next price move will be? Probably the same magnitude as this one. What started this price move? There's your left-right combo confirming. EPRK,
be ready to buy this one or buy this one again. You can see the J-hook pattern setting up. You can see you're right here at the breakout level. If it opens positive, prospects of this type of move. We did ALGN. Okay, now some of the biggies. As long as Apple keeps moving in this direction, that tells you the investor confidence is out there, not really uh, not really changing. Now, Amazon, this is why the analysis of each individual, individual chart is so revealing. As you can see, Amazon's not going anywhere. You can see Apple has got a good gap up positive move. So you this is what uh, uh, just recognizing which patterns are working. You can see Netflix doing a J hook pattern after an inverted hammer. And what's our simple analysis of an inverted hammer? You see an inverted hammer and they trade positive the next day, kind of expect a ninety five percent probability it's going to go higher. Now, I know these are a lot of little detailed tidbits to try to remember all of these. That's why we do the uh, high profit uh, uh, weekend where we take each pattern and uh, tell what the results will be. So at least now you have them all in one place. That's, uh, that's a, a major advantage. To recognizing what investor sentiment really does often. Kind of a double bottom setting up. Now, a double bottom is much more concise if it was double bottoming here. But the fact that you have it up, pull back, and do a double bottom with this area being higher than this area. Now look what happened today. There's your doji sandwich that broke you out through the, the T-line, the 50. And close right at the 34. If this opens positive, where do you think the, the trajectory is likely to be? Right back up in this range. So it makes her very viable. All right, so they got earnings coming up. All right, what is today? Don't even what day it is. We all blend together. And it was so great to be able to watch the Super Bowl on a huge one foot by two foot TV screen in the hospital room. That just made me want to kick your grandmother. Apple, a 45 degree is what one description. Another one's a fry pan bottom. But yes, the 45 degree would be based upon that best friend gap up through the 50. Just stay long until you see a severe cell signal. Labu tells you that the uh, biotechs are holding up well, and look where you are right now, right at a breakout level. So if they open this positive tomorrow, you can either be trading Labu or you can be trading some of the biotech stocks that have the better, better looking charts. We did Amazon, Tesla, low. You can see it's still having a little bit of problem getting up through the 200. So if you're long, you stay long, and you definitely don't want to see a trade back below the uh, the key line. If they did, after a doji, what would that be telling you? They aren't going through the 200. Get back out of the trade and go someplace else. I've also put UTX over here on the biggies now. Nice steady Eddie J-hook pattern. AMD. This one. Better open positive and trade positive. If it trades back down through this level, they're doing some profit taking. But again, notice that this was a, a bearish flutter kicker setup, but then that kicker signal going in the opposite direction. So what is the signal that you identify with? Obviously the latest signal telling you what investor sentiment is doing. So if I had shorted this one, the 
which I wouldn't have on because I'm not watching it. But if I'd shorted this one and they gapped it up the next day on earnings, it closed it out immediately. Now, does that mean you did the wrong thing? thing? Definitely not. What you need to learn to do is if you know what the pattern is telling you and which way it should be going, you also know when to get out of a trade immediately. Is open positive NASDAQ up 15 or more? Nah. Just open positive, um, which is kind of a very quick analysis. If you see the, obviously, the NASDAQ opening here, it's still trading positive. What you don't want to see is it opening down here. That's telling you, half they aren't. I can make this bigger. So what's the, just a very simple analysis? If we're in the uptrend, they should be opening it right about here and start trading up. They shouldn't be gapping it down here and uh, like this. That tells you yeah, they're not opening positive. So if I'm looking at buying something tomorrow and they're opening the NASDAQ down here, yeah, I'm not going to jump into anything because apparently the selling has started. In Micron, another one that is one of the what I consider a biggie, that they're kind of in the J hook mode at this point. Apple gapped up to support level. I thought that means it is a reversal signal. Now remember where your uh, What was this doing when it gapped up? Make this smaller. What do we, what is this, if we're looking at this chart, do we see anything significant as far as some sort of pattern? I'm going to probably draw a line like this. Draw a line like this. So what do you got going on? Kind of a wedge pattern, and or just even a little rounding bottom. And then when they gapped it up through this level, was that gapping up at the top of a trend? No, that was breaking out of a congestion area. So remember, just because you have a gap up doesn't necessarily mean going to find one. This is where you're kind of more concerned about a gap up. So they're gapping it up in the overbought area, a little bit away from the T line. That's where you start watching for reversal. Here, even though you're climbing up slowly, the gap up told you there's a new dynamic. And what did this gap up tell us? First of all, it came back and used the 34 as support. They opened it on the 50 and eventually closed it above the 50. What's that tell you about investor sentiment? Going higher. NASDAQ going to be skewed lower? Yes, this is telling you the buying's coming in. I don't think Google. Oh, Google, as far as, yeah, if it's, uh, let me take a quick gander here. Google, did the report? They closed at one. 1141, they're going to open up at around 1105, down 40 points. Well, Yeah, the queues are going to be slightly lower. They closed at 169.50. They're bidding 168.69, 168.73. So it's not going to be a huge uh, pullback. And I'm not even sure that Google is one of your uh, well-followed stocks as far as uh, – Overall market, I think Apple, Amazon, 
uh, Tesla, they're they're more kind of the line like Google. I would say is in the, that category, the big mover, but not. I would say the lower end of that category. All right. So these are why you watch. Uh, I wouldn't trade Clorox for know-how. Because it says that slow, lethargic, I that just may be a liar. Does it move nicely, pulled back? This is why you should do as I say, not as I do. Clorox is a tradable stock. I've never got to put that down here. As you can see, the Clorox does have at least percentage moves, not so much trading the stock, but definitely trading the uh, <clears throat> trading the, uh, oh, you know. I forgot what I was going to say. But there's your left right combo. There's your bullish doji sandwich. So, just right here. If you're, oh, if you're trading options, Clorox is a, a decent one to trade. Bonnage, kind of the same scenario, kind of an institutional trader. But you can see the fry pan bottom, slow curve. I'd be a buyer of this one with the expectation you've probably got a, uh, about a 27% upside potential up to this level. Uh, Square, I'm pulling up Square to put, point out an illustration that a lot of people have a hard time doing. I say a lot of people because I figure if I had a hard time doing it, a lot of people have a hard time doing it. There was a hammer type signal the next day. It opened here and traded up here, so it was a good place to be buying. Well, what's our simple rule? If the bulls are taking control, you don't want to see them close back below the T-line. The fact that they closed right back here at the T-line, that they aren't, there's not a whole lot of positive trading. Close it out. We don't know whether it's going to stay hovering in here. Now you've got a little bit bullish confirmation again. I would rather be buying it back. I'd rather sell it out here and buy it back here with the better confirmation that they're still buying this one. Now, the same scenario would occur. If I was buying tomorrow on positive trading and it closed back below the T-line, I'm right back out of the trade. Because here's the, the one simple rhetorical question criteria that I place on every trade I make. I'm buying. What do I expect to have happen? That my J-hook pattern is working. So if I'm buying a left-right combo potential, and it closes back here, didn't do what I expected. If I'm buying, expecting a J-hook pattern, and it closes back here, it's not doing what I expected. Go on to something else or wait until this one does set up correctly. So I'm showing this because not every good chart setup is going to work. This looked fantastic. Not fantastic. It looked good. Buying right in here. Not right back out here. Now, I mean, I'm losing money by buying it back here. No, more than likely, I took that money and moved to someplace else, and that money is making me some uh, money someplace, uh, someplace else. So, uh, just just use what I call the common sense analysis of what's happening in the chart. So, notice the E L O S. Notice the setup. There's our scoop pattern setup. There's your blast off. If you were long and stayed long, you want to just kind of hold on to it, but you want to see it trade positive. If it opens lower tomorrow, you close it out. You can always buy it back on the first signs that the profit taking is over. PXMD. There's your scoop pattern. Now you've got the Likelihood of a slingshot effect, 
of this magnitude going into the next move. ABEO, kind of your fry pan bottom. Oh, bullish confirmation. Another one that you can be buying and still have the probabilities in your favor and knowing what your parameters are. If it's opening positive and breaking out through this level, it should be going in this direction. Where would you not want to see this close? Back below the 50. That would tell you you haven't broken out. It didn't do what the, uh, the pattern was telling you it was supposed to be doing. So if you just use that simple criteria, criteria that when you buy something, it's because you're expecting it to do something, and if it doesn't do it, close it out. It's better to take small losses. Every time you get into a trade and it's, got, it's not working, get out with a small loss. Because I can guarantee you that whatever trade you did today, it took a small loss, and you moved into something else, that afternoon or tomorrow, you won't even remember today's trade. The ones you will remember are the ones that you held on to. This isn't one of them. You can see kind of your wedge formation breaking out on MBOT. But the ones you will remember are the ones that you hold on to, and you're looking at it three weeks later, and you're saying, why the heck did I stay in this, uh, stay in this trade? And that's not just words of wisdom. That's from years of stupid non-decisions of getting out of a position when it's time to get out. Uh, Derm. You can see the dojis. You can see the bullish confirmation, inverted hammer doji. What's that tell us about our downtrend? Our downtrend is over. Start looking for more upside. AXSM, low curve. Where did this break out? Right there. What's this tell us? Wave one, wave two, slow curve, wave three. Sonu. Look at the bobble breakout. Look at your doji sandwich. This one I wouldn't be buying here, but it's a good illustration of what type of signal did you have when you got to the 50, an evening star signal. If you were long from your morning star signal, confirmation, and you saw that doji right here, what's your criteria? Just very simple. It's going to move in the direction of how they open. So if they open it lower and start trading it down, you take off half the position just to be satisfy your ego that it's not turning around and heading back up. And you definitely put your other stop at the low of the doji because if they're coming down through there in the overbought condition at the 50 that everybody's watching, what's that telling you right away they're doing at the 50? They're taking profit to get out of the trade. What do we know about a bobble pattern? We can be, if we're selling here, we can be buying back here. You may give up 15 cents, but your probabilities were that when you sold, you didn't know whether it was coming back here. When you were buying, there was a good probability it was still going in this direction. This is a bobble breakout, yes. So news is going to buy out Apple. That's going to be a big, big chunk. But anyways, it doesn't matter what the reason is. We can see what investor sentiment is doing. Use that. Where's the breakout level? Right there. What's the pattern? A fry pan bottom. JB, are you in here? Your AUPH morning star signal breakout. Now you can be buying it.
Rare X, notice your doji sandwich, your inverted hammer, your fry pan bottom. Another one you can be buying with high probabilities that it's going to be heading in an upward direction. AAXN, observe the obvious. Where was the breakout level? What type of signal today? Kind of your doji sandwich. Where do you think your next likely target is? Wave one, wave three taking you up into this range. Now remember, not every chart is going to work out perfectly. What we're looking for are the ones where the probabilities are in our favor that they could work or heading in that direction. DRK, Comstock, right here with a kind of a left-right combo, bobble breakout, another one that if it breaks out, where do you think this one's going? Up here to the uh, 200. Let me take a time out here. I didn't even check to see what crude oil did today. Crude oil is still on a slow, steady uptrend. Pump, there's your. Gay hook bobble breakout, another one with a wave one, making this uh, by hitting it into the $22, $23 range. Uh, lots of good looking setups, yes. So, a lot of people will be asking with so many setups, how do you pick? How do you pick uh, the best ones? And this is why we are doing the training to show you all the good setups, but that you can pick out three or four that you recognize and understand where they work, become an expert at it, and you're going to probably always have more trades than you'll ever be able to make based upon those three or four, but you know exactly when to get in, meaning what are the market conditions that you want to get in? What are the breakout levels? Uh, what confirms getting in? How long do you stay in? What are the market conditions when you get out? If you understand all those, uh, I want to say, stars in alignment, you know when to be buying something and when not to be buying based upon knowing that, that type of pattern very well. Here's a fry pan bottom bobble breakout on WPX. Another oil stock, whiting. Kind of a slow curve. Supporting at the 50, where do you think the next target might be? All the way up to the 200. And NBL Noble, one that's setting up. I still want to see it break out through this level. You had the startup. So here's a very classic, not, I don't want to use the word, very con concise example. But if this is looking like it's doing a fry pan, or not a fry pan bottom, a j -hook pattern, what do we want to see here? We don't want to see a bearish engulfing signal. That tells us things aren't working just yet. Move on to something else. So the J-hook pattern, Like we can see in Zixi, tells us we can be a buyer here. AVLR, a J hook pattern. Broke out, and your bobble break out of the 50. Now, where's your next breakout? You're sitting right there at it. What started the uptrend? A bullish engulfing followed by a doji sandwich to the T-line, a breakout. If they take this positive, you start looking for another 12-point move, taking you up into about the $55 area. Zine. There was your breakout. There's your best friend. If you have a sell signal. No, not yet. But what's your safety factor? You know, there's some profit taking. I'd probably, if I was long, I'd put a sell stop just below uh, this level, the low of today. 
That tells me there's probably profit taking. Look for them to come back to the T line. Now, on the other hand, if they open it right here where we drew the line and start trading positive, what does this become? It becomes your trend kicker signal. It tells you there's going to be more upside. You can be buying. Even though you're getting up here in the overbought area and it's already had a 50% move, a trend kicker says they're still, the bulls are still there. You can still be going after it. You can be going after your doji, uh-ohs, your doji sandwiches. Well, shuzz butts. What's doing here? D E M. I've gotten stuck on this. So let me go to something else. Your J hook pattern. Z M. Z P M not found. What am I doing wrong? Get the F C M. Nope. Well, I don't know what happened there. E Z P M will come up over here. Uh, so there's kind of your uh, day look pattern on uh, SUPV, but if you can calculate wave one, wave two, where do you think wave three is going? So I wouldn't be a buyer here, but if I was long, I'd start watching to be more conscious of what's happening uh, up there. What is the green and red bar? I don't know what this is. It may just be showing that the day was positive or something. How is a J-hook different than a bobble? A J-hook, you can see where it sold off and supported on the T-line and headed higher. A bobble is going to be more defining. There might be, it may have sold off at the 50-day moving average and started back up. Let me see what I've got here that might no that's not one. This is M I E Z. Notice when it came up it used the fifty as support. That's a J hook. Now had the fifty been right here, yeah we call that a bobble because all the bobble is is just a much more clarified uh, uh J hook pattern. AMRX. Now, why do I have that over here in Facebook? That's just a, no, I don't. These are doji sandwiches. I've been doing this all wrong. Got these under the, now the doji sandwich, that's what I'm looking at. All right. So that doji sandwich is telling us we had more upside. Beat doji sandwich telling us the J-hook pattern was working. AMRX was the doji sandwich telling us we now have a big prospect of this downtrend is being broken. You've got uh, more upside potential. Monroe, doji sandwich with a hammer signal, J-hook pattern. That's got all the implications that they could be taking things higher. Now, we already should have a uh, a little bit of a uh, oh, in, you know, let's say inference that the auto stocks or the auto uh, parts stocks are acting well, as we saw in Delphi. I would suspect something like AutoZone. AutoZone is coming up nicely. So when we look at something like Monroe, with that type of reversal, 
Look at your belt hold down here, started your uptrend. Now, here is a bobble. I've just put an X because this is probably going to be recommended. But look at what happened after your belt hold. Your uptrend started. Where did it fail? Right smack dab at the 50. Hold back and started back up. What type of pattern is it setting up? Well, if we took the 50 out, just took it off the screen, you could see it was doing a J-hook pattern. The fact that you had a 50 that told you exactly where they were taking profits and where they were coming back up through that level told you, you know, we've more than likely got more upside. Now, what tells us we got more upside? Because, first of all, we got a huge hammer signal. The cash is the curled back up. We did a doji sandwich that brought us back up above the T line, and then the second part of it broke you through the 50, which created the bobble breakout after a slow curve. That's basically, with all our understanding of what human nature does, we're pretty much seeing confirmation. The bulls are definitely taking control of this one. JB. Haven't you been around long enough to know that we won't do individual ones until Jim does the double line? JB, I'm sitting here tapping my foot. My foot is all red. Uh, no, I skipped one. Uh, flowers. Flowers is one that's showing us the doji gap up 45 degree. So the reason I point this out is that we kind of have expectations of what to look for after a, uh, after a doji best friend signal. Again, over here in Zine, there was your best friend signal breakout of this Resistance level. These are why you want to learn which ones, which signals and patterns produce the very strong uh, uptrends. ESPR, look where the doji sandwich occurred. You can see what type of rounding bottom we had setting up. And now we did a doji sandwich that went through the moving averages. If you add the Analysis that we know what should ex to expect after a doji sandwich, which is more upside. We know there's probably want to stay long or even go long on this one because of all the evidence right here that the 50 day and the 200 day moving average were not going to act as resistance anymore. There's a J hook pattern. So the difference between a J hook pattern and a bobble is that a bobble has an obvious resistance level. A J-hook pattern usually has an obvious support level, which could be the 50 and or the T-line. A J-hook pattern right off the 50, where do you think the next likely target's going to be? Up here. UTX, there was our bobble J-hook pattern. Where do you think the next likely target's going to be? As long as it stays above the T-line, look for it to go to the, the 200. There's your kicker signal. <coughs> Excuse me. The fact that they gapped it up. So what do we know what to do on this one? What would make us be buyers of this one tomorrow? Anybody? If it opens positive, yes. What would happen if it opens positive? What type of signal or pattern would it be setting up? Ron's got the first clue, yes. That bullish flutter kicker, Marshall got the second. Yes. So if this opened positive, what do you want to be doing? You want to be buying immediately. Because more than likely, it's breaking out through this trend. And two, what told us there was a lot of strength in this setup? The 
back that they closed it here, and the next day they gapped it up above the previous day's open. And look what they've already done today. Difference between a doji sandwich, Deanna, is a doji sandwich is a green candle followed by a positive doji followed by a green candle. The, do, or the bullish flutter kicker is a red candle followed by a gap up doji above the previous day's open. And then a positive open, our simple doji rule, telling you there's still a lot of strength. So the reason I point this out is we know what the strongest signals are, which is basically your kicker signal. And we know that a bullish flutter kicker gets us prepared that if they open this positive and goes positive, and we took out this little flutter, what do we got? We've got a gap up kicker signal. This is the type of thing uh, that would be starting probably wave three. Consider this wave one, wave two. But the fact that they get a kicker signal, in this case off the 34, back through the uh, above the 200. And notice what the consolidation did today. And I, I point this out time after time. If nobody has the T-line on their chart, they pulled it right back to that level and took it back up. What's that kind of telling us, those that have the T-line on their chart? But that natural support level is where the profit taking was initially over, and they started uh, started heading higher again. That, that consolidation back to the T-line is just further confirmation that uh, – That's where the uh, bears stopped and the bulls stepped back in again. McKenzie, wave one, indecisive, 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 and then kind of your belt hold, bullish engulfing confirmation. So what do you got here? Bullish J-hook pattern. If it opens positive tomorrow, what can you be doing? and be figuring your wave one and wave three are going to be about the same. Okay, I think that's about all I've got for tonight. I, uh, I've got stars next to four. I mean, there's a ton of them on here that you can go after. Yeah, hold on, David. I'll get to CVIA. I would suspect is going from that was a about a about two and a half point move. A two and a half point move would take you up into the eight eighty five area. You're getting them right now, SP. CBIA, AXSM, Wave 1, Wave 3, Monroe, I would suspect they can bring it back up. Let me make this smaller. Bobble breakout, strong move. We could bring it back up into the $85 area. And USFD, that bullish flutter kicker signal. Oh, Pashai. Almost did that. They open this positive tomorrow. It's broken that trend going higher. Look at, uh, again, this is why I always look at the charts history not just that charts history but the way i kind of identified which signals were the best look at your uh, best friend bullish uh, trading Bristol Myers, a 
let's see, where did it open? It opened up here and closed up here. Yes. Now, the only difference, though, is that it's a dragonfly doji, but where is it in the stochastic? Still not in the overbought area. Where is it in the trend? Not in the overbought area. What type of signal can we see setting up on this? There's your uh, potential JLUC pattern. So where would you want to be buying this one? I'm going to take this line off. Look where it closed. Closed above the 50, closed above this little downtrending channel. What's this tell us? If they open this positive tomorrow, what do you got as far as a pattern? There's your, your doji sandwich breakout. AMD, I would have it trading. This one needs to open positive and trade positive. Let me see if I can see what they did after. Yeah, it looks like it's opening lower. So if they open this one lower, I could probably close it out immediately. Because where do you think with that far away from the T-line, you're moving back to, right back to the T line. So the doji, bearish confirmation. If they're still trading it lower, close out the position. If I'm trading this one and I it opens lower and it closes out the position, I can always buy it back if it comes back up through the open telling me the bulls are back in there again. Diana, it's not me analyzing the charts. It's just me recognizing what the signals and patterns are that the Japanese rice traders have shown us to be signals. And the confirmation is, for me, is that if I see something like this, a kicker signal, Or I see something like this as broken out after a bullish engulfing signal. I know my potential target. It's because I've seen so many confirmations. Back in the, uh, oh, when I was first learning candlesticks, I would sit there. You've probably heard this boring story, but I'll tell it again. Because I've been bored for three days. There's no reason why you should all be bored. But uh, when I was first doing candlesticks, I would get a chart book shipped out of California. I, I don't know whether it was stock charts or not. But when I got it, which was usually on Tuesday after the previous week, I would take my little mechanical pencil and I would start making the uh, signals based upon, I had a Quotrex at that time, which showed me the high, low, open close of whatever I was trading. So I'd take my little mechanical pencil and I'd make those signals at the end of the, uh, on the right hand side of the page. And I would analyze them and I would be trading, let's say, lean hogs. And it would be doing, going in my direction, or I'd be buying on positive trading. And then I would say, all right, where's a place where I shouldn't see it trade? And I would say, all right, I'm going to stop out if it comes back down through X. Well, I, that was the time I was buying houses in Atlanta, renovating them, reselling them. So in the morning, I would head over to Home Depot and my pick up truck and pick up all the supplies and I'd have my Quotrex and I'd be heading downtown to downtown Atlanta full of supplies and I'd be watching my trade and it would be slowly coming back to where I knew I should stop out and I didn't have a stop there because I was smart enough that I would just came back down to that level I'd just pick up the phone off 
that time they were connected to the dashboard of your, uh, whatever you're driving, I would just call the broker and say, I right, close it out. But then as I'm driving down the road, I see it come back, come back, come back. And I'm thinking, oh, man, what if it came back right to the level that I uh, picked as my stop? And as soon as I stopped out, it turned right around and headed back up. Boy, they're not going to trick me. So I'd see it hit the level, and it'd keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I often tell people, I know there was a lot of people in Atlanta watching this grown man driving a pickup truck full of supplies down to his crew in uh, central Atlanta with tears just rolling down his face. Because I would sit there and say, why would you look at something and analyze what it should be doing and then not do what it tells you to do? So that became my uh, my criteria eventually for writing book number three, How to Eliminate Your Emotions, is very one simple factor. Just do what the charts have been telling you to do. Not because it's just new charting systems that told you what was going on. These charts have been were developed hundreds of years ago, and they're still working today. You've got to kind of assume that they work or we wouldn't be looking at them. So now I can look at a chart like this and say, all right, I want to be a buyer on positive trading. And where would I want to sell? What's the Japanese rice traders tell us to do? Tells you if they close back below the halfway point of the candle that told you the bulls are in control, who's in control? The bears are still in control. Close it out. So the other factor that I had to get through as far as keeping my emotions out of my trading was that at the point that I realized that approximately one-third of my trades aren't going to work, that immediately took all the ego, emotional weight off my shoulders that if I bought this because it was supposed to do this and it closed here, I didn't say to myself, oh, man, hang on to it and see if it's going to work. Or, boy, if you close it here, uh, you thought I was going to do this. How stupid that you uh, did this. I could now say rationally, oh, didn't do what it was supposed to, close it out and move on to the next one. That does two things for me. One, it closes out bad trades very quickly. And two, keeps my mental faculties from staying in something that's not working and moving on to something that tells me this is what I should be doing. Uh, RT, that's what I think was happening is on green or on bullish days, there's a green uh, sidebar and uh, on bearish days is red. Yeah, I see AMD is down a little bit. You always have the mindset that it the trade won't work when you enter it? No. Every time I put on a trade, my mindset is that this trade is going to work or the probabilities of this trade working are greatly in my favor. Now, I've also defined probabilities that because I see a good-looking trade, that doesn't mean it's going to work. It just tells me this is a trade that's got the probabilities of working. So I've got two steps. I put on the trade because it should be doing what I expect it to do. And if it does, I keep holding the trade. If it does something like opens here and closes here, not doing what I expect it to do, I close it out. I have no, no more attachment, no more ego to it than that. Then that trade did not work. But I know that Two out of every three of my trades will work. So when I get out of a bad trade that didn't work, I move to something that becomes or looking for a trade that will work. So my the old uh, philosophy that if you cut your losses short, the profits on the good trades are well going to cover all the, the losses. That's another good-looking chart on the MC. Um, Kind of a left, yes, a left right combo, but more so.
we'll go back to quiz time. What other factors can you apply to buying this one right here? Double bottom, number one. Oversold, yep. Closed above the T-line. The cassock's curling up. And where is it coming from? A series of dojis. Yep, kind of a cradle pattern. So if you're looking at this, <coughs> excuse me, you're looking at it on the basis of what is there another, and this goes to, we're, I, we're getting enough people asking how do we get rid of our emotions. We do a, uh, a weekend, I forget whether it's one or two days, on how to, the decision-making process you should be making with candlesticks so that you get rid of the emotional trading. And I've got a lot of people, when we usually ask uh, everybody to put in their uh, their bugaboos, and I, one of them I get quite often is, I can an analyze a chart, but I can't pull the trigger. I just don't have enough courage to pull the trigger. What, I, what, what can I do to resolve that? And my answer is, if you analyze your chart, and you have everything that tells you you should be buying on positive trading, then what, what's keeping you from buying? And the answer is, oh, what if I open, buy it on a positive open and it turns, turns against you? Then you have to go back and analyze what the whole point of candlestick analysis is, is that these signals are telling you the probabilities that are it's going in this direction. So you're already calculating that as soon as you buy it, it might go the opposite direction instead of calculating that if it opens positive, it should be going in this direction. So anyways, we walk through. So, yes, this is what I call convergence analysis. The cassocks in the oversold area, a series of dojis, kind of a left-right combination. Cradle pattern setup. At the same level, it bottomed out after a series of doji. What can you think of that would tell you not to buy this stock on, on a positive open? Nothing. And what's your criteria for holding it? If you don't want to see it close back below the halfway point of the candle that told you the bulls were in control. If you keep going on the basis, or if you keep trading on the basis, that your expectation, it might hit the gray line, but the gray line isn't a severe resistance level. But even if it hits the gray line and fails, where are, are you from where you bought it? You're still positive. My problem is sometimes a ricochet from pulling the trigger. Remember, the 30% rule helps me big time. Yep. And it helped me, too. Um, so once you once you establish the simple rules that we uh, have about signals, if you're buying and it starts trading positive, now your next criteria comes into play. Um, you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line, our next rule. Okay, kept you way over time, but if you want to do, Jim, do the double line, if everybody keeps their request to one or two, um, we'll try to do as many as we can. Western, good-looking fry pan bottom. And notice, notice the message. Notice your best friend, then they gap it up, profit taking over. But what was the message? They gapped it up. You see the double bottom. You stay long until you see a sell signal. You're getting up to the overbought area. Pick a spot just as a safety stop. U.S. Steel. All you can do here is stay long. It's not a very vibrant move right now. 
but you're still in an uptrend, so you always keep your safety stop just below the uh, T-line. That's a good-looking chart. Trox, those are Doji Sandwich, your breakout. I wouldn't be afraid to be a buyer of this one. AAOI, we did. I wouldn't be afraid to be a buyer of this one either on positive trading. Bidu, same scenario. Buy on positive trading. Notice today. Got to make these things bigger. Notice today what it did. It came right back down to the 50, which acted as support after it went through. Telling you they weren't selling it off. Stay long on this one. American. Kind of a J-hook pattern. Figure your next target on positive trading is taking you up to the 200-day uh, moving average. Jern, that's a nice little slow curve. Just make sure your volume is big on a $1 stock, but look what started your uptrend. There's still your best friend. You stay long on this one. And Zion, another nice J-hook pattern. If you're buying this one, I'm going to buy it on positive trading, telling you that resistance level is not acting as resistance anymore. Big breakout. I'm going to make this much smaller. That would be, uh, I would still suspect, remember anytime you see this big price move, in this case, it looks like a little, yeah, a little best. Oh, no. Ah. Can everybody still hear me? Yeah. Well, that's a fine howdy. Just blew a fuse down here. The whole room went, went, went dark. So, anyways, look for a 45 degree off of here. EGAN, not anything real vibrant, but you're in an uptrend. You stay long as long as this stays above the T line. Uh, Conoco, you can be buying this one. Notice how they kind of broke this little obvious resistance level again with a best friend. I would stay long. Don't let it close back below. Uh, the uh, 200. eBay, kind of your bobble breakout. Failed at the 50. I'm sorry, at the 200. There's your morning star signal. I'd be a buyer of this one. That's kind of a J-hook pattern in progress. Another J-hook pattern. You just stay long as long as it stays above the uh, T-line. Ah. Oh, that's not one. That's like knock knock who's there. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe who? Cantaloupe tonight pause cut the last. C A C W, another J hook pattern setting up. Especially if it breaks out through that level, your next target would be up here at the uh the two hundred. Whoops. LCI, if you got out of this one over the last couple of days, you can think about buying it back. Now, when I say you can think about it, your first criteria would be to break out through this level. But more than likely, the 200-day moving average is going to be your, your next target. The uh, shooting star on this one is a little... You know, yeah, a little bit disconcerting. You're not quite in the overbought area, but I, if I was long this one, I wouldn't want to see him trade it back below the halfway point of the previous candle. That would tell me the uh, uh, sellers are starting to take control. 
This one, nothing. And I wouldn't be long or short. If I'd been long and it closed back here, remember what this signal pretty much illustrates. But if this was our J-hook pattern and they did a bearish engulfing signal, the bulls weren't in control. I'd be right back out of it. EXR, you stay long on this one. J-hook pattern in progress. Melly. Stay long, J-hook pattern in progress. Overstock. Uh, nothing yet. I'd be buying, you can be buying on positive trading, and you definitely want to see it get through that level. AAOI, you buy on positive trading. Use the uh, E-line under 50 as your stop. Pfizer. Pfizer, again, this was a very simple scenario. When you saw the doji hitting the 50 resistance, if it opened lower, you should have closed it out. However, now you've been notified that it's bouncing off the T-line. You can get ready to buy this back, especially if it comes back up through the 50. That means your bobble breakout is working. Jack. A uh, deck was one that the message told you they were still taking profits. I would have closed it out today, but I'd get ready to buy it on the next signs of buying, especially if it came back up through today's open. But right now, it's in the process of telling you there's profit taking. You don't know when the profit taking is over. Again, the Chrome would have gone to the 10-minute chart and taking profits. You could always buy it back if they start trading positive, but notice how far away you've moved from the T-line up to that level. But here's your result of a fry pan bottom, which is exactly what we look for. Notice how the uptrend started with kind of a cradle pattern, then your J-hook, your breakout, and all you could do is stay long until you see a sell signal with the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, that's when you want to start moving to your uh, the 10-minute chart. Adobe, J-hook pattern with a doji sandwich. You can be buying this one. Micron, you can get ready to buy this one, especially if it opens positive tomorrow. And Dollar General, same scenario. You can see the wedge J-hook pattern. I'd be a buyer. With the idea that I want to see it break out through that level pretty quick. Black. Another one that has to open positive. You're in the overbought area. You got doji, doji. It has to open positive to show you that it's doing a double doji uh, versus getting ready to reverse. Trade desk, stay long. You are at the breakout level. You stay long. You have today or tomorrow. You have your safety stop at the uh, at today's open. PECL, there's your little kicker signal right off the 50. Stay long. I would suspect up here. Or at least your 200 might be a viable target. Roku did well at the open. Up five bucks. Look at the 10 minute chart. You would have protected your profits and sold. Yeah, probably pretty close to that level. However, notice where the selling started on your 10 minute chart. And why would you think about selling at that level? Because look how far away you blew up through the uh, through the uh, 50. So if I see something like this, where are we? We're in pretty close to the overbought area, and we've just blasted through a uh, resistance level. What do we not want to see? Obviously, we don't want to see coming back and close below that level. 
So I'm looking up here to say, ah, maybe I start taking some profits because I can always buy back on a confirmed buy signal. This one you should be out of, or, uh, yeah, you should have been out probably on Friday, because you could see which way it was going. Kind of a wedge formation that was forming below or below the T-line, and it gapped down. Now, where would I be buying this? I want to see it get back up above that resistance level. We did CGC. You know why it's so hard. See my keyboards because half my lights are out in this room. All right, CGC uh, needed to break out. So if it opened lower tomorrow, I'd take profit. Oh, sure. Uh, no, not necessarily. Let's see what you, yeah, for this price stock. But we don't know if it's going to stop here. Because look at wave one. That was about a 11-point uh, move. All you do now is you buy it based upon a breakout through this level with the expectation that once it gets to the 200, you just watch it a little bit more carefully and see uh, see what it does at that level. Netflix, you can be a buyer. You can see the J-hook pattern. And then what you're really looking for is for it to get up through this level. GE. Well, it did the same thing, so you could be in a 45 degree. So you can stay long as long as it stays above the T line and the uh, three T line, and which is probably likely. But I would put a safety stop right here at the open of the uh, gap up day because if it came down through the, uh, through there, it's telling you. There's not a whole lot of strength right now. UTW, another one where you can pretty much stay long. Not wildly exciting, but it's moving in the right direction. Boeing. Stay long. Have your safety stop right about in here. Or well, probably your safety stop should be at today's open. It shouldn't come back down to that level. We did new beverage. It needs to definitely open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, telling you kind of a witch formation is forming. There's some profit taking going on. An ACD. That the uh, ah A C e, B put a safety stop right here. If it came back down through there, it's not breaking out. Right now, I'd say you stay lo stay long until you see a sell signal. And Yeti, nothing yet, but you can see it's trying to base here on the 34. But you still need to see this probably break up through this downtrending resistance level. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, not bad. It's just the uh, aggravating our cellulitis. So tomorrow, I don't know what the pre-market futures are showing right now. But as long as we stay above the 200 while it, the uh, T line's catching up, just assuming that we are in an uptrend. Which I would suspect if you use this 
area as your breakout level. I'm telling you this can stay long as long as it stays above the T line. I'm sorry, above the uh, above the uh, 200. Yeah. So if the futures uh, they're not real strong, but it doesn't really matter right now. It's more important to see what they do when they uh, on the open tomorrow. All right, everybody, have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat room tomorrow. We'll see you then.